By now, you've probably run out of stock for most, if not all, of your products. We need to learn how to produce more. Production requires the consumption of raw materials to turn those into sellable product, as well as time for the product to come off the lines. You have a single production line, so only one product can be produced at a time. The capacity of your production line and workers is 25,000 units per simulated day. To manufacture products, you need to give instructions to the production team, represented by a released production order in the SAP system. You may release more than one order at a time, queuing up the instructions to the production team. The simulator plays the role of your production team. Each day, 25,000 units against an order will be confirmed, and your inventory will be updated. You'll be able to see the effect of this in your inventory report. On the following day, that inventory is available for sale. If the production team completes all the production orders, in essence finishing all their assigned work, they will stop producing. It's your decision what and when the production team will manufacture. Let's see how to do that in SAP. First, we need sufficient raw materials. If you run the inventory report, you will see the raw materials that you have on hand. You should have an equal number of bags, boxes, and total weight of edible raw materials. You have exactly the right raw materials to produce enough product to replace the inventory that you started with at the beginning of round one. The SAP system has been configured to prevent you from releasing production orders if you do not have sufficient materials, so you don't need to check the inventory report each time. But it is useful to know this for later. In round three, it will become more important. For now, though, know that you have sufficient raw materials for round two. To release production orders, we convert them from our production plan. We can see our current production plan with transaction CO41, Collective Conversion of Planned Orders. A plan order differs from a production order in that it is merely an intention to produce, not an instruction to produce. We execute the plan by converting each plan order into a production order and releasing it to the production team. Note that each order is for 50,000 units. Given our production capacity, each production run will take two days to complete. We can queue up production orders simply by releasing them one after the other. The simulation will honor the release order and confirm production in the same sequence. Note that there is no save button in this transaction. The convert and release is immediate, so you can't change your mind. You can convert and release orders as early as you like, so long as you already have all the raw materials on hand. Notice that at this moment, the total quantity of plan orders matches the raw materials that you have on hand. This won't always be the case, as you will learn in the next round. It's a good idea to convert and release only a few orders at a time, just enough to ensure the production line is always busy. An important rule of the simulation is that once an order has been released to the production team, it cannot be recalled. So, if you release too many orders in advance, you commit your production team's schedule. If you run out of stock of one product, you will have to wait for the current production schedule to complete before you can produce that product again. You can release more than one order at a time. This is especially useful if you want to do a long production run of one product, or you don't really care about the sequence of the production schedule. To keep track of what your production team has completed, what they are currently producing, and what's still pending, we can use the production schedule report, ZCOOIS. This report shows all the production orders in the system in order of reverse schedule. In other words, the first line will be the last item to be produced. The target column is the total amount of the production run, and the confirmed column is how many units have been produced so far. If the target amount equals the confirmed amount, what would that indicate? This indicates that the production order has been completed. Similarly, production orders with confirmed equal to zero indicate production orders that have not been started. Production orders with a value for confirmed that is less than the target, but not zero, are what the production team is currently manufacturing. The columns start and finish are simulation dates in the form of quarter slash day. These tell you when production of an order was started for dates in the past, or will start for dates in the future, and when we're finished or will finish. Released is the date the order was received by the production team. Any value of n.sch, short for not scheduled, indicates a newly released order. The production team has not yet confirmed the schedule. In reality, the simulation has not yet picked up and registered the new order. Remember, 
the simulator takes on the role of the production team and controls the passing of time. So when it's not running or processing other work, it's the same as if your production team was asleep. Setup indicates the number of hours it will take to switch your production line over from producing one of your products to a different product. In the introductory sim, there is no production switch cost, so setup time will always be zero. Finally, we also see the average cost per box, the unit cost of the raw materials consumed when manufacturing the products for that order. So here, we have another place to see historical cost information for our products. Since the cost structure in the introductory game is very stable, these will not change for each product. You now know how to control your production team to make new inventory. By controlling the timing of the conversion and release of production orders, try to replenish your inventory and maintain stock of all products. Remember, no advanced orders. If you stock out of product, you are probably losing sales that could have been yours. In addition to this new task, you must also continue to perform all the tasks learned in the first round. Use pricing and marketing to try to match how quickly you are selling your products with the rate at which you can produce them again. Remember, you can only produce one product at a time and only 25,000 units each day. Don't forget you have your job aid if you need to review any information on how to operate SAP.